Good morning, Year 5. Welcome to our final um, reading text of the spring one-half term. This week we're going to look at a non-fiction text for the next three days and it's about Bear Grylls and his epic expeditions. Bear Grylls is an adventurer, who some of you may know, and we're going to look at little extracts um, from his text discussing what he's learned about history and the planet that we live in. Now you may have noticed from the text if you printed it off that some of the pages jump around a bit, that we go from page 6 and 7 suddenly up to 18. Don't worry about that, that has been done deliberately, just so that we get a flavour of some different things. So, let's just have a little overview of what this text is about. So this is the blurb. Can you tell me what a blurb is? Yeah, so the blurb is the information about the book. So the blurb of this non-fiction text tells us to find out about some of the most incredible expeditions in history. An expedition as an adventure or a journey. Explore Central Africa with Livingston and Stanley. Traverse the American West with Lewis and Clark. Cross the arid Australian outback with Burke and Wills and join a Munson and Scott's race to be the first to reach the South Pole. Even take an exclusive peek into Bear's epic expedition through the frozen, treacherous waters of the North West Passage. So this um, text tells us about expeditions taken by other people as well as Bear Grylls. And we're just going to look at little extracts throughout this week. Okay, but as always, the first thing we do on a Monday before we get stuck into the reading text is to meet the vocabulary that we will encounter throughout the text. So the first word that we will encounter is remote. My turn, remote. Your turn? Good. So remote means at a far distance in space or in time. So you can see from the picture in the background here, this is a remote island. It's at a far distance from anything else. So it is remote. There is nothing around it. There is nothing much around it. It is all alone. Remote means to be at a far distance in space or in time. So this island would relate to at a far distance in space. Now, a question, here's a question with our key vocabulary in it. Do you think there may be life on remote planets? So, that question is asking, do you think there would be life on planets that is not surrounded by anything? So think of like planets um, in our solar system that is um, millions of miles away from Earth. Do you think there's life on those remote planets? That is the word remote used in context. Okay, our second word we're going to encounter is venture. My turn, venture. Your turn. Good. Now, I want you to think, what does the word venture sound like if you added um, a prefix to it? Yeah, adventure and venture sound very alike. So venture is quite similar in meaning to the word adventure. Adventure is an undertaking or an enterprise that involves risk or is of an uncertain outcome. He's trying to interest us in his new business venture. So it's quite similar to adventure, but the difference would be is that it involves a risk and we don't really know the outcome. So what the sentence mean is, is he's trying to interest us in his new business venture. This man has engaged in a new business venture. He has invested in a new business. Maybe he set up a new business that is an adventure that is risky and he doesn't know the outcome, he doesn't know whether his business will work out or not. So that is why the word venture can be used to describe his business. Okay, word number three from the text is privilege. My turn, privilege. Your turn. Good. A privilege is a right or an advantage belonging to a person. Okay. His immigrant parents felt that being able to live in this country was a privilege. So his parents who came from another country felt like it was a privilege for them to be able to live in this country. They felt like it was an advantage or a right that they had. Um, extra play in school is a privilege granted to a certain class because of their good behaviour. Uh, another privilege you might have in school is being on the school council. So that is a privilege. It is an honour to have that privilege. If you met a very famous person, or if you met the Queen perhaps, you might feel like it was a privilege to meet them. It was an advantage, it was something that you really enjoyed and it was exclusive to you or to a group of people. Okay, 
halfway there. Our fourth word is destructive. My turn, destructive. Your turn. Okay, lots of you probably know what the word destructive means and the picture in the background gives you a clue as you see a fire rampaging through a forest. Destructive is to cause chaos or destruction. The deer have been very destructive of our garden in recent years. So they've destroyed the garden or perhaps they've caused chaos. This fire is destructive. Natural elements like water can be destructive. If there's a very strong tidal wave or a tsunami, it can cause chaos to a village or a city, or it could cause destruction by destroying buildings. My turn, destructive. Your turn. Okay, word number five from our text is encounter. My turn, encounter. Your turn. Encounter is to meet or, conf or confront in a battle or conflict. So encounter isn't, doesn't just mean to meet someone, it often means in a battle or in a conflict. A conflict is um, a disagreement. So let's look at the example in the sentence. The football teams will encounter each other for the second time this weekend. So the football teams will be in a battle, a football battle, there'll be a conflict, maybe they're rivals, and they're going to encounter each other. That means they're coming up against each other. They're going to meet each other, not in a very pleasant or happy way. They're going to be rivals. They're going to want to beat each other so that we can use the word encounter in this context. You can also see from the picture here, the bear and the man have encountered each other. There's conflict between them. The man is trying to control the bear in this photo. So you don't just say the man met the bear, you would say that the man encountered the bear. Okay, next word is going to be obtain. My turn, obtain. Your turn. Good, obtain. Um, it's just really just a more, inf more formal word of saying get, to get. To obtain is just more formally saying to get. It means to gain possession of or to acquire something, simply to get. So you can see this person has obtained a stone, they have acquired a stone, they've gained possession of stone, they have got a stone. Let's look at the sentence with the example. He obtained his college degree in just three years. So he obtained, he acquired, he got his college degree or his university degree in just three years. My turn, obtain. Your turn. Good. Okay, next word is territory. My turn, territory. Your turn. Okay, territory is an area or a region of land. The word territory will come up a lot when we're studying history in school. So, for example, this sentence would be quite relevant. Settlers were lured to the territory in the West by tales of finding gold. So, settlers um, went to the West to Europe, to America, they were lured by tales of finding gold, to the territory, to those areas. And the Vikings settled in territory near rivers and the sea because it was easily accessible for their boats. They settled near territory, um, which is a place or a region of land. You might also hear in a football match that they have a lot of territory. That means they're in the right areas of the pitch. Or a cat or a dog mark their territory uh, territory, so that they're proud of their territory, that they protect their area or their land. Next word is skirted. My turn, skirted. Your turn. Okay, so skirted means to edge or go around something. So this kind of gives us a clue. It means to skirt. I skirted the meadow. So maybe I saw a bull in the field or in the meadow. So I skirted the meadow. I went around the meadow. It means to edge or to go around. I skirted the puddle so I didn't get wet. I went around the puddle so I wouldn't get wet. Okay, and that was our last word. We'll come to the big question next week. But for now, we're going to read our text. We've encountered eight pieces of new vocabulary. So now we have the opportunity to read. Now, as it is Monday, I will take responsibility today to read and you'll be able to follow along with me and tomorrow then we'll do some paired reading that I know you've been so good at and thank you so much for uploading all your wonderful reading to CISO. So, Bear Grylls, Epic Expeditions. 
We live on a magnificent planet with so much to see. Since I was a child, I have always felt the pull of the wild. I've been lucky enough to have had the opportunity to go on some amazing adventures in some fantastic parts of the world, often to very remote places where only a few human beings have adventured before. Okay, so I'm going to stop there because there's quite a bit in that opening um, sentence. So this is Bear Grylls talking, giving us the introduction about his adventures and lands he has ventured to and setting us up for the text. So there's a couple of words here we need to discuss. Remote, can you remember what remote means? Yeah, so remote would be a place that is at a distance um, from everything else. So if we look at that in context, often to very remote places, that would mean places that are far away, where only a few human beings have ventured before. So where only a few human beings have gone before, um, where they've adventured to with risk and without knowing the outcome. So if you venture, to a remote place where not many people have been that involves risk and not knowing the outcomes the words here remote and ventured have been chosen quite appropriately okay let's continue on my adventures i have followed in the footsteps of some epic explorers who led expeditions into the wildest and most remote parts of the world for the first time in history blazing a trail that future adventurers like me have followed so he's explaining how he got into adventuring that he has followed the trail that has been blazed in the past by others who have um, gone before him and he is following in their footsteps to go to remote places and discover the wonderful planet that we live in. So, a little bit of information down here next to the picture of Bear. This is Bear Grylls here on the right. When you're going out into the wild, preparation is essential. I will spend months training for big expeditions to make sure I have the essential skills to stay safe. So let's continue on together. That's page six. Let's go to page seven. So Bear is quite proud of the planet and he believes that we really have a responsibility to protect it. So let's have a look at what he says. My expeditions have taken me face to face with some of the most magnificent creatures on the planet. Sadly, many of these creatures are now at risk if we do not take steps to protect our planet. So kind of what we learned in the last few weeks um, with the rhinos and protecting um, their habitats, what we learned about biomes, all really drawing together nicely here with this text as well, and what you've done in outdoor learning as well about endangered species. So let's continue here. Protecting our planet. While exploring the world is an amazing experience, it is also a great privilege that comes with important responsibility. Human beings are some of the most destructive animals in the world, and are destroying rainforests and endangering animals. So he believes that humans are quite destructive, that they're causing chaos, that they are destroying parts of the wor world that is now creating danger for rainforests and other animals that could lead to them going extinct. So this really does link with our biomes unit quite nicely and our outdoor learning units. If we want to continue going on epic expeditions like the ones in this book, it is vital that we look after our planet, making sure we leave everything as we find it and respect the natural world as much as possible. So if you take something or if you go somewhere, you leave it as you found it. That is the message he is sending. Okay, so now we're going to go and have a look at a journey um, that happened many hundred years ago um, in um, North America. So this book is full of these journeys and references to different ventures that were taking place by different adventurers that Bear has been inspired by. So this is one that we're now going to look at together. So it's called Across the Plains. So we've jumped up to page 16, so don't worry, we're just jumping around a small bit this week. Okay, Across the Plains. Through the spring, summer and autumn of 1804, so 1804 would be over 200 years ago, the Corpse of Discovery, their group, travelled up the Missouri River. While most of the men rowed or pulled the boats, others hunted for deer, duck and geese. Most days, Lewis, so he's one of the adventurers, walked along the shore with Seaman, his dog, making observations of animals and birds and making notes that he later used when drawing maps. In August, one of the men, Sergeant Charles Floyd, fell ill and died. He was buried beside the Missouri River 
and a nearby stream was named the Floyd River in his honour. If something is named in your honour, it's named after you, often when you've died, just like Sergeant Charles Floyd died here when he got sick. The explorers then continued north, through the lands of various Native American peoples, including the Yankton, Arakara and Teton Sioux. Within, with the weather growing colder, they decided to halt in the territory of the Mandan Indians and build a fort where they could spend the winter. So a fort is like a small little um, tent or little uh, building where they set up. Okay, let's have a look at the little box up here for some more information. When the river ice broke up in March, the corpse left Fort Mandan. The keel boat was sent back east. Six new canoes and two pirogues were taken west. The expedition passed through treeless plains, thick with buffalo and beneath gigantic cliffs, today known as the Missouri Breaks, which Lewis described as beautiful in the extreme. Okay, let's continue on and find out what happened. So they settled among the Mandan, which were a Native American group. The Mandan lived in large lodges, each, each housing 20 or more people, and raised crops and hunted buffalo. They were friendly and encouraged the explorers to stay. Their village served as a major marketplace for other Native Americans, as well as French and British traders, so they were used to visitors. Bear says. So what does Bear say? Not this bear, but Bear Grylls. As the expedition moved west, they had increasingly frequent and frightening encounters with grizzly bears. So they involved conflict with bears. They met them um, in dangerous situations, which the men had never seen before. Lewis was chased by 73 metres by a bear weighing more than 136 kilograms. So Lewis himself had to run for 73 meters from a bear who weighed 136 kilograms. That's probably three times your weight, if not more. I would say more than that. And um, it's quite a frightening encounter there. At Fort Mandan, Lewis and Clark hired a French Canadian trader, Toussaint Charbonneau, as a guide mainly because his pregnant wife, Sakagawe, was a Shoshone Native American from the Rocky Mountains, and they knew she would be helpful there. Over the Rockies, so continuing on with Lewis's expedition and journey. So there you can see the map as they um, go outwards. That's the outward journey, and the broken line would be the return journey. So that map above would show you the route taken by the party across the Rocky Mountains. Party is a group of people. Over the Rockies. Strong currents and winds made progress slow. The men buried some equipment to use on the way back, which made the boats lighter. But in mid-June, they encountered a series of huge waterfalls, today known as the Great Falls and violent storms, which together delayed them by nearly a month. Then they entered a range of mountains higher than any they had even seen. The Rocky Mountains, at a place now called Three Forks, three rivers, met, three rivers met to form the Missouri. They followed the right-hand fork west, but soon realised that they would need horses and local knowledge to get across the mountains. They knew the Shoshone tribe could help, but frustratingly could not find them. Finally, on the 13th of August, Lewis located a Shoshone war party and with Sakagawa's help, obtained three horses and guides who led the corpse over the rest of the ranges. So what does obtained mean? Yes, they acquired the horses and the guides, or they got the horses and the guides. And finally, page 19, here's another map um, that illustrates their journey. So they went from here, the Great Falls, down to the Shoshone villages to that tribe, um, and along the Lemmy Pass. Beyond the Three Forks, the party followed the Jefferson River. There was no sign of the Shoshone, but on the 7th of August, Sakagawa recognised a hill. Beaverhead Rock, which at least meant they were in Shoshone territory, so in the area of the Shoshone tribe. Heading west from Great Falls, the corpse skitted the highest peaks by following the Jefferson River, crossing Lemmy Pass and then heading north up the Bitterroot Valley. But from the Traveller's Rest, they had to climb over the rugged Bitterroot Mountains. Okay, so that's where we're going to stop. You can read more about this expedition and other expedition in this book. Um, I have it somewhere in school. If you want to come back to school when we do get back and ask me for it, you're more than welcome to. But now we must set up our activity, which is always on a Monday, is the vocabulary activity. So, Monday the 8th of February. Let's zoom in. And I'm going to do the first one for you as always. So I have my eight words that we discussed, and I have the definitions, and I need to write the definition, or I need to write the word, 
rather next to the definition. Okay, the first one, let's see. To meet or confront in battle or conflict. Now this word was used over and over again throughout the text when we think of the bears that he encountered, that Lewis encountered, the dangerous waterfalls that they encountered, the danger they encountered throughout their entire journey. So, venture is an adventure. Territory relates to an area or a place. Obtain means to get. Now, encounter, I know because they met the bears that were dangerous, there were battles. Encounter is the best possible word to match that definition. So I'm going to write in encounter. Okay, so your job now is to pause the video here and just complete this first activity. You do not need to go on to the sentences yet as we're going to make sure we got all the words correct before we go on so we don't have any confusion. So pause the video here and then we'll mark it together. Okay, great work. I will now review the answers where you can mark your work. Okay, so encounter, to meet or confront in battle or conflict. Obtain is to gain possession of or acquire. Remote is at a far distance in space or time. Destructive causes chaos or destruction. Territory is an area or region of land. Venture is an undertaking or enterprise that involves risk or an uncertain outcome. Skirted means to edge or go around, and privilege is a right or advantage belonging exclusively to a person. So pause the video here if you need to go and take your fix any further. If you've all your taking your fixing done and ready to upload to Seesaw, then we're going to move on and look at the second part of the activity. So here you need to insert the correct words into the sentences. So I have eight sentences. I have my eight words with my eight meanings filled in um, on my other sheet from earlier on. So we're going to look at the first one here. I wanted to something, a gold medal at the sports day. Now, if you're at the sports day, you want a gold medal. You want to get a gold medal. You want to acquire a gold medal. So I want to venture a gold medal doesn't make sense. Yes, sports day could be a venture for you because it could be risky. Um, but it doesn't make sense in this context. I want it to territory. It makes absolutely no sense. I want to obtain a gold medal at the sports day. Let's just remind ourselves what obtain means. Obtain means to gain possession of or to acquire. And if you're at the sports day, you would like to gain possession of a gold medal. You would like to acquire. You would like to get a gold medal. So this one works best in this context. I want to obtain a gold medal at the sports day. Okay, so now you're set up. I've done the first one for you. You have eight more, or seven more, sorry, to complete. So pause the video here, complete the remaining one to eight. I will zoom in if you do not have the worksheet printed out. You can pause the video here and complete the remaining sentences. Okay, great work. Let's go through it together. That's number two, as I did number one already. It was an honour and a privilege when I met the famous Olympian. Number three. The man knew this venture was a risk as he had invested a lot of money in it. Number four. The cat marked its territory and hissed if anyone tried to enter. Number five. The encounter between the man and the bear did not last long nor end well for the man. Number six. I skirted around the puddle to avoid getting wet. Number seven, Wi-Fi can be difficult to come by in remote areas. And number eight, water can be fun, but also quite destructive. So make sure you have everything ticked or fixed before uploading to Seesaw, as the expectation is that you have marked before uploading. If you need to rewind to check any of these words, then please do, so that you're ready to go tomorrow for our pair reading, where we'll look at this text again more deeply, and you will take ownership over the reading. But other than that, have a lovely Monday afternoon and I will talk to you tomorrow. So bye for now.